Hi, everybody. Pastor Cliff Mansley here, Grace Community Church in Surprise, Arizona. I'm so glad that you tuned in for this Cliff Talk. We've got so much going on around here. It's fantastic. God is doing great things. God is actually leading people to himself. He's drawing people to his heart right here at Grace Community Church. I'm seeing people's lives transformed, and it's so exciting. And one of the things that you do know about is that uh, he's using our concert series. That's right. Uh, as people come out from the community to our different concerts, many of them are coming to faith or coming to, to, to church. They're coming back to church. And, and that's exciting. Tonight at seven o'clock, we've got Black River Jam. It's bluegrass, baby. It's going to be a ton of fun. It's our last hurrah, the concert series for the season. I hope you're going to be there and invite a thousand or so of your closest friends. But you know what? One of the things that was on my mind when I woke up, besides bluegrass, when I woke up this morning, one of the things that was on my mind and very concerning to me is uh, Matthew 6, 33, which says, uh, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Many of you know that scripture verse, but there are so many things that compete for our heart and mind today. Uh, we have... Uh, all, all these different forms of sexuality. We have all this stuff on the internet. We have artificial intelligence. So when it comes to our country, we have competing countries wanting to take us down. We have the CCP in China. We have Russia. We have uh, even India uh, wants to take us down. You might say, well, how do you know that? Well, I'm not going to get into it right now. But you know, one of the, one of the, threads of thought that we see, one of the most significant influences that we see in our culture right now um, that is behind what's called critical theory or critical race theory, um, what's behind uh, diversity, uh, inclusion, and equity, or whatever that is. That spells die, doesn't it? Oh, I think it, they, they do it a little differently, but you know what I'm talking about. These are all Marxist concepts. Did you know that? Marxism is the repudiation of religion. It's the repudiation of Christ. Karl Marx was an atheist. He hated God. He hated Christians. He hated the church. In fact, he once said, in fact, he said on many occasions something like this. He said, the first requisite of the happiness of the people is the abolition of religion. Hear that? So he has no interest in God. But let me tell you, friends, I'm a pastor who believes that we are one nation under God. And if we're going to receive his blessing, it isn't by going with the atheists and it isn't by becoming a bunch of communists that, that don't believe in God. It's by seeking God. And when we seek first his kingdom, then he'll bless us as a nation. But without that seeking, we're going to go nowhere. In fact, let me just simply review just a couple of things, a few things about uh, Marxism. And it states that the controls of everything go to the government. The government owns everything. We own nothing and we're supposed to somehow be happy. It, it, it denies the, uh, the right to private ownership. Uh, all of this is, is, runs counter to the scripture. You know, the, the scriptures say if you're not willing to uh, work, you shouldn't eat. Paul, St. Paul said that. And, and I believe that too. Now, I'm not talking about people who are in a real crisis in life. Uh, I'm saying we should help them. But if they're unwilling to work, if they're just going to be lazy and loaf, forget about it. It's, you know, you need to, to pull your, your uh, uh, fair share. And so um, the other thing that I've found in Marxism, it sure doesn't answer the question of why we're here, who made us, wh what we're supposed to be about. It, it doesn't talk about a, a, a a master designer, uh, God designed the universe. And, and whatever you think of that, uh, there had to be something before there was this universe. Uh, nothing, hey, some people say, well, it was the Big Bang. Well, let me tell you, friends, something caused the Big Bang if there was a Big Bang. Uh, there had to be something behind it all. Your eye didn't just simply, simply uh, become a complicated organism, a complex organism rather, that, that uh, suddenly can see things uh, out of chaos. No, 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 there was a designer here. And Marxism doesn't answer any of that stuff. 
But many of our politicians are trying to force our nation in a direction away from God. So friends, I want to encourage you today. Seek first God's kingdom. Don't listen to those those, those Marxists who would lead you away from God. Let your heart rest on him. And remember, as his Holy Spirit begins to work in us, it transforms us, it changes us, it builds in us love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control, all those things. But friends, you're not going to find those, any of those things uh, emphasized in communism. You're not going to find those in Marxism. All right? Well, you know, yesterday we had a, a, a wonderful showing. It was a hard thing to watch, but we watched a movie here at the church called um, A Letter to the American Church by Eric Metaxas, who is a world-class historian, wrote a, a major book uh, biography on uh, Martin Luther, as well as Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He has studied uh, pre-World War II Germany very, very carefully. If you weren't able to see that, I want you to be able to see that. If I have, a, if I have 10 or 15 people talk to me the next day, we'll schedule another viewing. But if you want to borrow that and you're willing to watch it overnight, I'm willing to loan that DVD to you. It is very important that we understand what's going on in our culture right now, friends, especially as we pray and seek first the kingdom of God, especially as we pray about our role as salt and light in this world, as we pray about how God would use us in the upcoming election. Yes, we all have a responsibility to vote. And I would pray that you would pray and ask God how you should vote. And... Um, I, I, I already know how I'm going to vote unless God changes something and, uh, and I see things differently. I know how I'm going to vote because I always vote with him in mind. And I've been praying about this for a long time. Well, friends, um, I, I do want to just bring you up to speed on what's going on around here at the church. Besides the Black River Jam concert tonight. Oh, please, please, please come out and invite all your friends. Uh, but the kids... The boys and girls, Heritage Girls and Trail Life Boys are having a big Pinewood Derby here this next Tuesday night, the 23rd, 6 o'clock. If you want to come out and watch the fun, you are welcome to do that. It, it is a spectacular event with uh, Pinewood Derby cars that these kids carve. And then thirdly, let's see, uh, Wednesday, the next day, the 24th, is Sparkle Day. All right, I know, it brings a smile to people's face, doesn't it? Well, you know... When my mother used to, to tell me to clean up my room, she would say, it better be sparkling. Well, uh, okay, I sort of did my best most of the time. But you know what? When it comes to God's house, hey, this, this is where we meet for worship. Let's make this place sparkle. Some of the guys, you know, we've got some, uh, well, doesn't have to be just guys. We've got some smaller chores that need to be done that, that, that are mechanical in nature or are, uh, they're more than just cleaning. We've got a little painting and some other things that need to be done. Friends, I just hope that you'll come out and join us. But make sure you sign up so that we can buy enough lunch for everybody because we're having a light lunch following. We, you know, one of the things I love about this church is when we do... Uh, an event like Sparkle Day, we try to make it fun. So it's fun to work side by side with people, to do a little deep cleaning in the kitchen, to do a little deep cleaning in our closets, to kind of make sure things are looking just right. Uh, May 2nd is the National Day of Prayer, 12 noon. That's a Thursday. I hope you'll mark it on your calendar because, friends, if we're not praying, we can do all the you know, voting and stuff that, that we want and say, well, I, I did the right thing. Friends, we need to seek the Lord. And this is an urgent matter in our nation right now, and it should be an urgent matter in our church. Please, please, please come out to the National Day of Prayer service that we will have here on the 2nd of May at 12 noon. And know this, at 9.45 every Tuesday morning, we also have a prayer session every week. And that'll go on through the summer. I hope that you will join us for that. We need to have you come out to pray. And you might say, well, I don't know how to pray out loud. Well, it's about time you learn, isn't it? How long have you been around the church, friends? Hey, it's a great opportunity. Come out on Tuesday morning. You'll learn how to pray out loud in a meaningful way. Nobody's going to look down their noses at you. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, 
May 6th, which is Monday the 6th, uh, we, we have the men's breakfast going on, 8 o'clock. Know this, through the summer, the men's and women's Bible studies continue to meet every Monday morning, the men at 9, the women at 9.30. And um, so we always have something going on. Summer tends to get a little quieter around here as all the snowbirds fly up north to uh, places like Wisconsin and Michigan and whatnot. Um, but we still have ministry going uh, around the clock. Now in May, I'm going to move, I'm going to move from studying the book of Jonah at the pastor's study Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. I'm going to move from the, 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 the uh, gospel according to Jonah to uh, the gospel according to Habakkuk. Well, who's Habakkuk? Habakkuk was another one of these what are called minor prophets with a major message. And uh, so we're going to spend some weeks on that in the, in the month of May. And I hope you'll join us for that. Um, mm, what else do we have going on? Uh, Dr. Clements continuing his course in steel girders for mine builders. That's Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, I'm not sure how long Sunday school is going to continue, but it keeps going for a while yet. And then, uh, oh, you know what? There's a form about this big. It's yellow. And it, it is a, f a form that lets us know when you're headed up north if you're a snowbird and when you're coming back. And that just kind of helps us to know how to best minister to you. And so I hope that you will find one of those yellow forms out in the uh, sheep gate or as some prefer the lobby. Uh, make sure you fill that out. Let us know when you're going to be gone, when you're coming back. It's not because we feel the need to keep meticulous tabs on everybody. It's just because we want to be able to care for you uh, the best as, as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, there are a couple of other needs around the church that are very important. One is that we're finding that there are more people who need rides to church and mostly to Monday morning Bible studies. And if you are able to help, even if you're not able to commit to every week, if you can do some of it, we would love it if you would let us know. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet out in the sheep gate, the lobby, and uh, then uh, you can let us know if you would be willing to occasionally pick up someone and bring them to church, maybe even take them home. Um, we just are having more and more requests of people who aren't able to drive. So if you don't mind helping in this way, and if you feel the Lord putting it on your heart, actually it's more if the Lord is putting it on your heart, then sign up, please, because we sure need your help. And there is one other ministry that we have as a church that isn't official. And it's, uh, it's important, though. We have people who call up uh, from all around our community, uh, people who are in assisted living, people who are lonely, and they'd like somebody to come and visit with them, maybe play a game of cards with them or or uh, just sit and talk. Um, if you're willing to spend time with someone else, maybe someone who doesn't even go to this church, but they've called us and reached out to us as the church, please, I'm lonely. This is a great opportunity for you to minister to a person in a, in a very thoughtful, gracious, meaningful way. And, and you don't have to have major training or anything like that. Maybe you just need to know how to play cards and, and chat. And, um, and maybe you pray with that person before you leave. But please, please sign up in the sheep gate, the lobby, uh, if you are willing to help visit people who are, are begging us, please come visit me. You know, so many people don't have any family left anymore. No sons or daughters, no spouses, no moms or dads. My heart goes out to them, friends. I want to visit every one of them, but my goodness, there's just so much one body can do. Would you help me out here? Would you help these friends out? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this church and all that you're doing for the many people who are being touched with and moved and motivated by the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the opportunities that you lay in front of us to make a, a huge difference in people's lives through simple things, 
things that we can understand, concerts and cards and, and games and whatnot, just by sharing our hearts. It doesn't sound like much, but Lord, you work through those things. So take us, use us as you will, that we would be vessels of your love in this community, drawing people ever closer to your, your hearts as your Holy Spirit works within us. We love you, Lord, and we give you the ministry of this church. We give you the fellowship of this church. We give you our hearts that you would be glorified and blessed. For we pray this all in the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, until we meet again, dear friends, God bless you and keep your eyes fixed on the skies.